How many of you have attended uh, celebrity parties? I haven't, right? Well, if you count MIT professors as being celebrities, I've been to a lot of them. But uh, that's, uh, that's not the case, right? Um, people don't, don't really think of us as celebrities, which is fine with me. So this, this puzzle is, uh, I call it uh, the best time to party. And I'm having a little trouble erasing the. Uh, you're right. Uh, there's another one. All right. Well, I'm probably going to run out of this. But you know what? This time I'll, I'll, I'll use, I don't think I need this super thick chalk. There's a slightly, I'll use this one. Um, So uh, the, uh, the setup here, uh, with all of these things, there's always a little bit of setup, um, is uh, uh, you got a ticket to this party. There are going to be all these uh, celebrities. And uh, uh, it's a time ticket uh, with some flexibility. You only get to stay for a certain amount of time uh, before you have to leave, and other people are going to come in and hop up with these celebrities. Uh, but you get to pick uh, the particular time that you go, right? And so initially, we'll set things up in a fairly straightforward way. Uh, we're going to say that uh, uh, you have um, an hour, uh, a particular hour. You know, maybe it's 6 to 7, 7 to 8, what have you. You get to choose. That's part of the puzzle. How do you pick the best time to party? And uh, you do have a schedule. And uh, amazingly, these celebrities are going to stick to those schedules. But the schedule has been published uh, with respect to when particular celebrities are going to be at this party. Right? And uh, as you can imagine, uh, as the uh, title of the puzzle gives away, you uh, want to choose the hour uh, such that the maximum number of celebrities. So you, you're uh, 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 not particularly uh, interested in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, particular celebrities or, or one specific celebrity. You just want to sort of max out you know, number of selfies so you can put it on your Facebook page, Instagram, what have you. Uh, and uh, you have that schedule, and you're trying to optimize uh, the number. Right? So uh, here you go. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, let's say, let's just solve this again manually first, and then we'll think of algorithms. We're going to have intervals again. And so. Um, Think of these as hours. You know, Beyonce comes in at 6, leaves at 7. Taylor from 7 through 9. Brad, 10 to 11. Katie, 10 to 12. Tom. 8 to 10. Kind of run out of room here. All right. So that's the schedule that's published, right? And we can think of these as hours. Uh, comes and goes. There's one small subtlety. Uh, which is, I'm going to think of these as closed intervals on the left end and open at the right end. So, so all that means is um, if this is uh, 6 PM, then if you come in at 6 PM on the dot, uh, well, you certainly get to see Beyonce. And if you come in at 6.59, you get to see Beyonce. But if you come in at 7, uh, she's gone. right? Um, and the same thing with uh, a Taylor at 9. So you have, to, um, uh, you, you have to choose your time uh, properly. Right? So um, what's, uh, what's the best time? You get to go for any hour that you choose. What's the best time 
uh, to go to get the maximum number of selfies? Anyone? You can do this uh, manually. Use, uh, tell me how, uh, tell, uh, uh, tell me what the, what the time is, and then I'll ask you what your algorithm was. Right? So, someone who hasn't, hasn't answered yet? Yep? Uh, either 6 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Either 6 o'clock or what, what's your name? Kevin. Oh, Kevin, right. Sorry. You're, um, you're the other Kevin. Right? So, um, 6 o'clock or 10 o'clock, because it's 6 o'clock. So, who are, who are the people you'd see at 6 o'clock? That's only two. So can you do better than two? Can someone do better than what Kevin did? Yeah, go ahead, Kanishka. Um, that would be Bradley. Uh, at 10 o'clock, you'll get Bradley, Katie, and uh, Trace. Yes, so you could do three. At 10 o'clock, you'd get Brad, you'd get Katie, and then you'd also get Drake. OK? So that's three, OK? So, um, that's, that's the best you can do uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this puzzle, right? But you, know, you, might, you may have hundreds of celebrities, and you want to pick the right time. So obviously, we want to write a computer program here, right? Um, what uh, algorithm, Kevin or um, Kanishka, did you use to do this? Uh, how do you do it in your head? Did you, did you go, at either, either one of you, did you go hour by hour? Did you go 6 o'clock? How many people are there? Or, or did you try and intersect? Or what did you do? Well, what's a the, what's the, a natural, um, what's a, the what's a reasonable way of proceeding here, right? What's a reasonable way of proceeding? Uh, someone other than, yeah, back there. Uh, look at the, the most frequent time. The frequent amount of time? So look at look at the hours. Look, you say six, you, you say six o'clock, and, and you try and see how many sixes are up there, or yeah. right. What's your name? Nisha. Nisha. So Nisha says she's going to go look uh, for six o'clock and see if how many sixes are up there, right? And there's two sixes up there, and you know maybe that's why Kevin said six, right? Um, on the other hand, um, clearly you know that didn't quite work, right? Uh, in in this case, because um, what what happened was. At uh, 10 o'clock, there's only two of those. And so that looks good, too, 6 and 10. But you miss the fact that 10 exists in between uh, in, in, in 9 and 11, correct? So you're not explicitly seeing these things, right? So, um, uh, but that gives you an algorithm. I mean, it does give you an algorithm. The algorithm is, um, let me go ahead and do a little bit uh, uh, better than what you described, a little more uh, uh, relaxed check, right? It's not just an identical, I want 6. Uh, to be in the table, but I want to see if six is contained in the interval associated with any particular celebrity, correct? So if I did six, I'd say six is contained in this interval. It's not contained in this interval, not, 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 yes, right? So I'd get two. I, and then when I finally got to 10, I'd get uh, contained, 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 and I'd get three, right? So um, there's clearly an algorithm here that depends on the, uh, the number of hours that you're looking at, depends really uh, uh, on the granularity of time. Okay? So uh, this, uh, this particular algorithm would say, uh, let me go ahead and uh, enumerate uh, the different times that um, I could possibly go. I could start at 6, I could start at uh, 7, uh, but I may be able to start at 6.30. I could go from 6.30 to 7.30. Maybe that's, uh, you're allowed to do that, right? Um, the point is, if you stick with the original description, you could go ahead and enumerate 6 through 12, and then you could generate a bunch of different numbers associated with the number of celebrities, and you could go ahead and pick uh, what, uh, 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 what time you want to go. Right? Um, so this is look, it's, it's a little bit like our previous puzzle in the sense that there's a, um, a, a relatively straightforward strategy that enumerates different hours and uh, goes through and does a bunch of computation, and then picks the maximum in this case. Previously, it was the minimum for you will all conform. Here is the maximum. Right? Um, what is the disadvantage of uh, this, uh, this particular algorithm uh, that we just described? Well, what is one potential disadvantage? Right? Yep. 
Go ahead. Fine. Well, uh, I mean, like it's not linear, so you have to make multiple passes on, like for example, like you have both. Like first of all, you have to enumerate all of the uh, possible times, and then for every time, you have to go through the list, uh, like over and over again. That's right. So there is a lot of computational, uh, computational. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of computation. Uh, there's a lot of computational overhead. Um, I, I'll, um, I'll, let me show you what the code looks like um, for um, the straightforward algorithm. All right, and so it's it's going to again uh, be um, in, in, intuitive. Um, it's going to do exactly what we just described, right? And so if you look at what you have up there, um, schedule up there is is simply um, a set of uh, a set of intervals, right? Um, and um, they're tuples. And so I have something that's bigger than this example here, but it includes that. And there's a whole bunch of things in there. Um, and now I'm going to um, look at um, this is just the start time for a, a particular celebrity. Uh, this is the end time for that celebrity. I'm just setting that up. And, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, I, it, I, I'm looking at um, uh, for each um, C in schedule. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. Um, I'm going to uh, figure out what the, uh, the, the, the start time is and uh, the, uh, the end, end is. And, and I'm just doing this simply because um, I want to figure out what the earliest um, what, what, what the what the earliest start time for any of these celebrities are. So in this case, it's six, and the latest time that a celebrity is is around is twelve, right? So that's all that this first thing does. It's just it's just finding the the, the range that I have to deal with. Okay, so there's not much there. Um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and compute what's called the celebrity density, and I'll show you the code for that. But that's essentially what uh, we described, which is for a particular hour between start and end, how many celebrities do I see at that particular hour, right? And then for the next hour, how many celebrities do I see? I'm just calling it the, 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 the density, right? Um, and, and then um, I, uh, uh, the count is, uh, is, is, uh, is a list that is going to have celebrity densities for particular times that correspond to the indices of count. And I'm just going to go through that list, and I'm going to figure out the the time that has max count or the maximum number of celebrities, OK? And um, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Don't worry about that. Um, uh, but I'm happy to answer questions if, um, um, uh, if you have them. Uh, and then I just say you know, the best time to attend the party is at this time, time which was uh, discovered here. And uh, the number of celebrities uh, who are going to be attending is max count, OK? So, so this is essentially the code for, for, for the algorithm. And um, this thing here is, is doing the slightly more relaxed check uh, uh, that, that I alluded to, which was like, when you have 6 o'clock, uh, you're not just looking for 6 here. Um, you're looking for 6 within this interval that looks like this. So 6 is definitely within this, but it would not be um, 6 is uh, not is not inside um, 5 and 6, as I described to you before. right? So that's simply the check. Uh, that's why you have a less than equal to here and a, and a strictly greater than over here, just to take care of that uh, closed and open part of it. Right? So um, again, I, if you don't understand every nuance in this code, it's not that big a deal. But hopefully, you have uh, the overall picture. Right? Um, make sense? Right? OK, so as you can imagine, there's a much better way. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a much better way that isn't as exhaustive as this one, right? And um, uh, uh, do people have a sense of what a better way would be, or would you like a hint? And, and anyone want to uh, conjecture a different way of solving this problem? That's yeah. Go ahead. Can you explain the exhaustiveness of this algorithm? So ah, so the exhaustiveness of this algorithm is as follows. So basically, what I'm saying is, uh, I, I, what I'm saying is. I'm going to go look at the range of times. And all of these are, are per hour, right? Everything is, is per hour. I'm going to look at the range of times. And I'm going to go ahead and, um, uh, and include um, uh, 6 through 12 here, right? And I'm going to go 6. And I'm going to go figure out at 6 um, uh, how many celebrities exist. And then at 7, how many celebrities exist. And then at 8, all the way to 12, right? And I'm going to get uh, in count, which is that uh, list there, I'm going to get for each uh, for uh, uh, for count six. I'm going to say two, and for count 
uh, 10, I'm going to get 3, right? Uh, because 10 is, is the hour. And then I'm going to go through that list and figure out that 10 had the maximum number in it, and that's the exhaustiveness, right? That makes sense? Right. So, uh, so if you're good with that, this algorithm works. But it's a little painful, right? Um, and so, so what's, what, uh, any ideas as to how we could do things uh, quite differently, which would be more, more efficient? It's, uh, and let me, let me give out the word. I want, I want an incremental way of, of doing this, right? How, how could I do this? I have a starting time, and um, I want to compute the same densities in, a, in an incremental way, OK? Someone else other than Fadi? Um, yeah, back there. Um, <clears throat> so you have to start at the end time. Can you just, for each list of or whatever, two bullet time or whatever, you can, yeah. um, you could keep like a, a, count, a different count, like a dictionary of that, of the start time, and then increment through each of the start times until the end and just add one each time. So you're basically iterating right. through each set of times and finding the count of each time, and then whichever time has the most. Right. You're, you're, you're absolutely on the right track. And it turns out you don't even need dictionaries. You can do this with just plain lists. But the, the idea here is, is actually a very compelling one. Uh, it's something that you'll see in other algorithms. Um, you, whenever you have something where you're doing repeated uh, computation, there's always, uh, many a time, there's a way of, of, uh, uh, of, of removing redundancy and turning it into incremental computation. right? And so the insight here is the following. The only time that celebrity uh, density, which is the number of celebrities that are in the room, changes is obviously when a celebrity enters or when a celebrity leaves, right? I mean, that's it. I mean, it, you know, we're all celebrities here. You know, and and uh, uh, um, I guess we did have someone leave, so there you go. And, and maybe someone is going to come in, right? So, so I just need to monitor uh, um, you know, sort of input and output or entry and exit, okay? So, and then I al also know what the endpoints are with respect to uh, the six time, 6 p.m. Versus, versus 12, correct? So what I can do here is the following. Um, suppose, suppose I had um, a chart that looks like this, right? And what I'm drawing here is are these intervals. They're not exactly what I had up there, but I'm drawing those intervals out, right? So you could think of this, uh, if you like, as being 6. You can think of uh, these two lined up as being 7, and so on and so forth, OK? So, um, so I could draw these out. And, and uh, I don't really have to draw these out in a, in a computer program, but I can certainly draw them out uh, in, in terms of giving you the intuition, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 0. So before 6, there's absolutely no one in the room. So I'm at 0, OK? And the moment I see, um, I, 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 I take one of these things, and if I, uh, if I see a celebrity, um, I can increment the count. So here. I get uh, at five, I'm at zero. At six, I get one. And, and at uh, seven, no one has left, and um, two more people have come in, so I get three. OK? And now the next thing happens uh, out here. Um, let's say this one here is eight. I would get four for that. And then out here, it's nine. I go four minus one equals three because this, this celebrity left, OK? So, um, so essentially, what I want to do is not have to uh, compute this over and over for every time running through all of the list of celebrities like I did before, right? For six, I went through all the celebrities. For seven, I went through all the celebrities. But if I sort the celebrities in um, a, a increasing order of start times, essentially, this picture is important, and it, it requires sorting because I went from left to right, right? And when I go from left to right, um, I'm essentially saying I want to see things that come earlier before the ones that come later, right? That's essentially what time goes to the right, right? 
So I'm going from left to right. So if I take these intervals and I sort them, OK, and um, uh, uh, basically sort them by the, by the, by the start times, then um, all I need to do is, in the sorted list of intervals, I just showed you the computation that we have to perform. Okay? The computation that we have to perform is, this was the first interval in the sorted list of intervals, right? because it was the leftmost interval. And I take that, and I go ahead and increment it to 1. Right? Then um, the next thing I do is I don't have to worry about uh, um, uh, any time, even if there was a time, if this was 6 and this was 8, for example, um, as long as there's no celebrity that came in at 7, there's no reason for me to change uh, anything in my data structure. Right? The only times that are interesting are when celebrities enter and leave. Okay? So the other nice thing about this algorithm is that um, it will work if Beyonce came in at 639, you know, 39, you know, 39, seconds, 39 minutes, 39 seconds, and left you know, at 651, whatever. Right? Because I'm only concerned with uh, the entry of a celebrity and the exit of a celebrity that correspond to these, uh, these points that uh, you see here. Right? Does, the, does the algorithm make sense from an intuitive standpoint? Right? You see what's happening here. It, uh, hopefully, the picture gives you, a, gives you a sense for how you're doing the correct computation. And the only times that things change are when at the end points of these intervals. Right? When you see someone, increment. When, you, when someone leaves, decrement, right? So this um, set of numbers that you generate is essentially the density down at the bottom that corresponds to um, uh, at particular times, not necessarily on the hour, but whenever the celebrities come and go, right? Um, and so that uh, list that you get is all that you need to look at um, to figure out what the maximum is, right? So ultimately, down below in this particular example, perhaps 4 was uh, the maximum. right? And it, it, it started with 0. It climbs up, you know, maybe goes to 4, maybe goes to 5, and then goes down again, maybe climbs up again. Who cares? You know, you, it, it, once you get to the point where you've written a program, size doesn't matter anymore. right? So the last thing I'll do is I'll show you the code for this. It'll be up on the website. And uh, feel free to uh, come to office hours. Um, and uh, ask me questions about the code or before uh, lecture tomorrow. Uh, but this is you know, the entirety of the code. And I'm not even using uh, the built-in sort functions in Python. Right? I, mean, I went ahead and wrote it just to give you a sense of how long the code would be. But it's a much more elegant algorithm. It, it would run faster on large examples. And I don't want to get into asymptotic complexity that's really um, beyond this uh, class. But uh, as you can imagine, rather than going through uh, the, the list of celebrities over and over, we're actually doing sorting exactly once, right? So, um, so that's, that's better. But essentially, what happens here is, is, is simple. Um, you go ahead and you create um, each of these times. So this is particular celebrity, particular time, and this is the start point of the celebrity. So you, you have to mark that. This is very different from that. Um, what happens here is I am? Adding. What happens here is I'm subtracting. right? So I have to know whether this point is very different from that point. This is the same as that, same as that. And all of these are similar. But I have to differentiate between the two for obvious reasons. right? So I have to have start and end. And then I, I go ahead and take these times. Each of these times that you see with these black dots here, they all need to be sorted. Because that's the only way I'm going to go from left to right. right? That's the only way by going through that list of times. right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that sorting. And I could have done times.sort, by the way. I don't have to have a um, sort list. But uh, I just, uh, as I said, I, I wanted to show you the, the code without using any Python library functions. And then, I, I, and then choose time is simply looking through that list, finding that maximum number, be it 4 or 5, and returning the index of that, because that tells you what the what the particular time is. And that time will always be, um, can someone tell me, last question, and I'll let you go, um, what, um, what, am I, what am I going to get on any given example? What am I going to get as the best time? Any given example. Uh, I'll get to you if, if uh, <laughs> Gunathra, if, uh, yeah. 
A time when more people come than leave? A time when more people come to leave, that's, that's correct. But I want something stronger. What, what's your name? Josh. Josh, yeah, Josh is right, but I want something even stronger than, uh, than a time that uh, more people come than leave. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's correct, uh, but uh, a, a variant uh, uh, observation. Someone else? Uh, I, I want to say something about, um, there's two sets of points here, right? Um, uh, there's two sets of points here. Which, point, which set of points are going to be the ones that are in play with respect to the maximum time? Right? That's maybe a better question. Right? Go ahead, Sinatra. Um, the arrival time of something? That's right. The arrival time of a celebrity, right? And it's true that what you said, uh, George, is correct. Ultimately, the best time is going to be when uh, uh, the maximum number of uh, 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 arrivals happen, right? Uh, but uh, the bottom line is I'm never going to. I'm never going to see, this is actually an interesting observation, and there's an exercise related to this observation for this puzzle that you might want to look at uh, that I'll put up on, on the website um, as soon as we're done here. You're, you're always going to pick one of these beginning times because that's when the increment happens. You'd never pick one of these because that's when a decrement happens, right? So, so that's all I wanted to say. And, um, and the reason I wanted to say that, as I said, there's, a, there's an extra question on top of this, a, a yet another algorithm to solve this that is really based on that final observation that we made. All right, well, thank you. Sorry for going over, but as I said, this is IAP. Forgive me. <laughs>